All right, so this is a 28 uh, liter bucket. Uh, drilled a hole at the bottom and added a little tap. Um, and this is a lid that seals pretty tight. And you notice there's a small hole there. So this is where it all begins. Um, what you need is, depending on sort of what you're doing, uh, for starters, what I started with and what I sort of recommend, uh, you can get these kits, which is basically a malt concentrate. Uh, it's a syrupy type uh, material, which you then water down to usually about 25 liters. Um, you add the sugars, usually it's about, you'd be impressed at how much sugar goes in, but about a kilo of, um, of, of sugar per 25 liters of um, like brewing liquid. Uh, and then very importantly, our little friends that make the whole process happen, the yeast. So it's very important, the main two factors I guess is hygiene. So um, somehow cleaning the equipment well, boiling water does a trick. Uh, you, there's also other uh, eco-friendly sterilizing products that you can use. Uh, and the second important factor is temperature. So on the actual bucket, there is a temperature regulator. Uh, and depending on what you're doing, whether it's lager or beer wine, uh, it gives you the indications of what temperature you need to keep it at. Um, once you've mixed it all up in there, so you've got the malt, you've got the water, you've brought it up to 25, you've added the sugar, and last, you add the yeast. Um, keep it at a stable temperature between 18 and 22. The way I do that is by adding some insulation. Very easy. I take my sleeping bag and sort of wrap it around like that and hold it together with some, um, some of these. And so that sort of ensures that the temperature remains at that state. Um, the way I know what's going on in there is through this airlock. Uh, there is that hole in there which allows basically this is quite an ingenious piece of uh, equipment. What it allows is for air to come out, but it doesn't allow air to go in. How it works is it has water here. Um, there's even a little bit in there right now. And it's got two levels. So you start off by putting the water in there at a level. As pressure builds up, the level is going to move. Um, uh, the beer will start talking and uh, once the yeast is activating uh, a lot of uh, the gases that are produced are uh, sort of pumped out through here um, and then after about five or six days when the water stabilizes again so that when there's no more pressure and it means that the yeast has sort of finished its process and eaten all the sugar that was in there transformed it into alcohol um, then the level will come back to normal and that's when you know that the first process is, is, is complete. At that stage, what I do, um, uh, that's when we do the bottling. So at this, uh, after this first process of a week, um, you've already got the general flavor of the beer. Uh, you have the alcohol contents, which you can calculate with one of these hydrometers. Um, we, you can get very technical here, but this gives you the density, which tells you whether the fermentation is finished or not. Uh, it gives you the sugar contents, um, and it also gives you the alcohol percentage. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of, kind of useful to know what you're drinking and be all scientific about it. Um, so, after this process, the second process, what we need to do is add the gas to make it uh, fizzy. Um, so what we do, um, there's different ways of doing it. The simplest that I have found is directly filling up bottles. You add about a teaspoon of uh, sugar in each bottle and you cap them away with this ingenious capping device. Uh, you can get lids um, in bulk, I get them off the internet and then you can just t uh, cap all the beers. That extra bit of sugar that you're putting in is feeding the, is, is gonna um, revitalize the yeast um, so that it continues its, its uh, eating process and as a result because there's no airlock there's no way of escaping um, the, the pressure will build up in there and it will gasify the beer uh, and that's how after about a week or so you get um, you get you know you open it up and you get that popping sound and it's ready to drink a uh, taste does develop over time so it's uh, I prefer to keep it for at least a month or two in the bottles in a nice, uh, cool, shady area. Uh, and then after that, it's, it's, it's perfectly ready to drink. And it's, trust me, if you try one from a normal bar or from here, you won't be able to tell the difference. If anything, these ones I find are more interesting and have more character.
What about the process? What, what is now the big difference of, um, of an industrial process? Where, where does, does this differ? Because this seems to be quite easy. Is it in, 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 in a big brewery the same? or? Um, well, yeah, this is definitely as small as it gets, uh, as simple as it gets, and it's you know pretty rewarding. Um, if you want to take it to another level in, in terms of making it as even small, uh, commercial brewer, uh, brewery, you would need, they would generally use tanks that are much bigger, uh, usually stainless steel with all the thermostats in there to regulate temperature properly. Um, the equipment we're talking about is, is a lot more um, sophisticated, I'd say. Um, but nonetheless, the process is, is still the same principle. Um, it's just, I guess, a bit more accurate and allows for more room with playing around with the different flavors and the different uh, alcohol contents and the different heads. Uh, there's, you can experiment a lot with depending on what sugars you use, with what malts you use, what hops you use. That can only sort of be done on, on, on it's easier done on that scale than on the home scale. What about uh, the yeast? Is that just, is it the same as with baking or is that a special yeast? Or? Uh, it is special brewer's yeast. I think back in the days, like in Belgium, where they have a long tradition, uh, it's yeast that naturally occurred in the, in the air. Um, we've isolated those yeasts and uh, are able to reproduce them and therefore market or commercialize them and, and make them available for home brewers. Um, but yeah, I mean, in our days, we sort of the way it's done is you eliminate all other yeasts. You don't want any other yeast, so that's where hygiene comes in, and you specifically use that one yeast. So in a way, it is a bit of a monoculture of yeast. You're only using one strand that's specifically designed for the for the brewing process. Back in the days, it wasn't necessarily like that. They would have much more variety of yeast. Uh, oftentimes, that would result in a very interesting uh, brew. But again, more than enough times uh, it resulted in something that was probably not drinkable <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah okay um what if you don't make it fizzy um, would that actually work you, you said you you bottle it with a, a half a, a spoon of sugar what what happens then if you don't make it fizzy is that a, an ale perhaps or is it uh i guess yeah that's um i don't know exactly the specifics of what would um what consists of an ale but that's uh i've, I've tried that without uh, adding the sugar at the end just capping it and it does taste very well if you if you're used to the most of the beers we get around here they're fizzy um so you sort of drink it and you say hmm it tastes like flat beer but for someone that's more used to the ales um i think they're perfectly drinkable already without the second gasification process uh, i would nonetheless leave them in the bottles for a couple of weeks just so that the flavor matures a bit and it develops um but other than that no you don't need to actually add uh, the gas if you if you don't want to mm. in an ever more regulated world is this legal uh it is depends probably on your country's regulations uh in luxembourg uh there's definitely nothing illegal about home brewing um the major turning point is when you start commercializing it so i would suspect if i was to sell one single bottle even to a friend hidden away behind the in in the dark alley immediately wee -woo, wee -woo, wee -woo, and they'll yeah they'll they'll catch on it but other than that no you 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 can get all the supplies unfortunately not in luxembourg there's no shop uh, as far as i know that supplies all of this but uh, there's there's uh, quite a lot of resources available online and they can um, send it to your place no problem and you can do it in your place no problem so long as you don't sell can you give us an idea of a budget how, how much uh... yeah um so this starter kit um, if you want to get it ready and sort of all included uh, ready to go sort of thing you're probably looking at about 80 euros to start with um, quite a reasonable budget um, if you want to sort of keep it even lower budget uh, if you have access to a bucket and one of these taps then uh, I think the only expense you will have is the um, the, the brewing material, so the, the malts, uh, concentrates, uh, the hops, the sugar, um, so you can bring the cost like very down to a minimum. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if you do the, the first investment, every time you use it, you're, so the, the, the cost goes down, let's say. So I've calculated that after a third batch of 25 liters, each bottle that I'm producing uh, is 
costing me about 25 cents. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. So I'd get 70 bottles more or less from one batch of these. Mm -hmm. How many um, uh, grams or, oh, that's pretty heavy actually. How many uh, of that do you need for, uh, or how much can you make out of this? Uh, so this, this specifically is designed for uh, this sort of quantity, so about 25 liters. Okay. Uh, maybe a bit less, a bit more, if you, depends then on if you want it with strong flavor or not as strong. But yeah, so this, uh, yeah, this is enough and the yeast that comes with it is enough for 25 liters of beer. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay.